part two of the Model 92 slash M9 service pistol by Nut and Fancy. I left off talking about the reliability of the design, talking about the phosphate coated military contract magazines pretty much suck. Uh, I've seen a lot of problems with these and the phosphate coating inside is very problematic as well. Not a great idea. Now, Beretta has addressed this and one way they did it is they have a sand resistant magazine design. I've got my laptop here and I want to try to show this to you. So let me get over here. Bear with me on this. Sorry. Scroll up a little bit. And here is actually the M9A1 pistol. And this was, uh, I guess, produced or is produced for the Marines. I'm not a super expert on that. Uh, it has a more aggressive grip on it. It also has a tactical rail on it. I like that addition. I always like more options. And then it also has this M9A1 sand resistant magazine. In other words, basically a magazine that's like everybody else's magazine. Because like I said, the Glock and the SIG don't have sand issues. At least not that I've heard of. I've never heard of the Navy SEALs complaining about theirs. And yet, um, I guess Beretta's had issues. Uh, at least from what I've seen. So, it is an issue. The magazines, especially the military contracts, uh, contract ones, lead to reliability problems. Now, if you're a civilian and you're using it, I would highly recommend uh, double checking your magazines to make sure that they won't jam with sand and stuff. And you can always upgrade them to maybe that new Beretta magazine. Excuse me. Or you could get the excellent Metgar replacement magazines, which I always recommend. Those are excellent as well. And they are not going to be phosphate coated on the inside. And actually when I said check them, that's what I mean, is make sure they're not phosphate coated uh, on the interior of the magazine. You'll have a much more reliable magazine. Now, the question is, what percentage of these jams and other reliability problems that I've personally seen were related to magazine? Uh, it's hard to say, because oftentimes I was shooting competitive, competitively on the line uh, or in qualification in my military job, and so... Uh, you know, I'm engaged in my own qualification. I can't, you know, meander on down the line and see what, why that dude's gun hiccuped. All I know is the shooting stopped and there's a jam on the line and everyone's got to wait while it's cleared. I've seen that many times with the Model 92. Uh, it's just been that way. Not sure what percentage is related to the magazine, but it's just happened. It happened to me. I mean, last year I was in a military service pistol um, competition and I saw this uh, gun, actually my own M9, jam twice in the course of fire. And one was a stovepipe, one was a failure to feed. So there's issues, and that's, that's just that. So definitely uh, durability, it is on par with Glock and SIG designs. Actually, let me back it up. I want to say durability, it's on par with the SIG design. I think they're neck and neck. I definitely do not think that the 92 slash M9 is more durable than a SIG P226, and definitely not, not more durable than a Glock 17 or Glock design. I think the Glock is probably superior to both in terms of durability. It's been proven by Chuck Taylor in the thousands and thousands of rounds he's sent down range in his Glock um, and other users around the world. It basically still leads this in durability and, and reliability. That brings us to accuracy of the Model 92. How accurate is this gun? It's an open slide design. It's not a uh, tilting barrel browning design like uh, the SIG and Glock. Uh, but I'll tell you this, I've been very pleased with the accuracy of the 92. It's as good, uh, well, I won't say as good, but almost as good as a SIG design. Um, is it capable of three inches at 25 yards, which is pretty much a, a reasonable measure to expect from a handgun? And I will say, yes, it is capable of that. Maybe even a little bit better. But if you want to get down to brass tacks and you're a competitor or you're really concerned about accuracy, I believe that the SIG definitely is more accurate. And I will say the Glock is probably on par, maybe slightly more accurate than the 92. Now, those are subjective um, observations by myself over the years, having shot all three designs like a lot. So take it as a data point, and that's all my reviews are, are a data point in your search for the truth. So that's the best I can say, is that it's, it's a very accurate design, and if you want to say how less accurate is it uh, than a SIG design, it's minuscule, to be honest. Maybe half inch at 25 yards, which in real world terms is meaningless. So, still an accurate gun, and that takes us to ergonomics. 
Um, in ergonomics, by the way, uh, I always safety check these. I forgot to show you that because there's so much to talk about. But the pistol is indeed empty, and so is the magazine, as you've seen. But in term of, terms of ergonomics, how does the 92 design stack up? Um, it's not bad if your hands are on the large size. If your hands are smaller, it's an issue. And you probably will not probably will not enjoy shooting the 92. A lot of female shooters do not like the 92. And that's because its grip circumference is large. It's thick, especially for uh, a 9 millimeter pistol. I would expect that thickness of grip, and I don't have my ruler handy, uh, but I would expect that on a 45 caliber or 40 caliber design. Now, that being said, again, if your hands are large, you can wrap around it and get a nice purchase on it. The grips that it comes with, the plastic grips, are finely checkered. They do a fine job on that, and you can get a good purchase on the pistol itself. But it's a thick grip. Definitely thicker than a Glock 17. It's thicker even still, or, uh, even still uh, than a Sig P226. So I do not like the thickness. I shouldn't say personally I don't because, again, my hands are larger. It, it fits me, but most shooters have issues with how thick the Model 92 is. Truth be told, that's just the way it is. Now, other ergonomics, let's talk about the trigger. And again, this is an empty gun. And in the military, it's okay to dry fire once you've checked the chamber and checked the magazine. Again, we do it. Yep. So we can dry fire when we're pointing in a safe direction. But the trigger is actually not too bad. And so is the trigger guard. Nicely shaped. I have no rubbing issues on the trigger with my finger like I did in the uh, like I do, not just did, in the Hecklencock USP design. Notice there's plenty of room here, and they actually designed that, if I'm not mistaken, so you could have enough room for gloves. So should you need to fire the 92 with gloves, you've got some room there. Trigger is metal. It's not plastic, uh, and there's no flex in it, of course. I like that, uh, and I'm speaking in reference to my cr uh, criticism of the H&K USP design, where there is lots of flex in that trigger. Now, I like this hooked uh, the hook trigger guard here that a lot of users, uh, well, actually it became very fashionable to bash that feature in the late mid to late 1990s. Everyone said it was useless, and all the gun riders jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, it's the stupidest design ever to have that. It's complete, and I completely disagree with that. I think if your hands are on the large size that you'll find that that is a very viable option how to hold the hand. Um, and that's the way I do it. You'll see in most of my shooting videos that I do curl my index finger around the front of that trigger guard. I find it to be a very stable and accurate way to shoot the gun. And that's what works for me. Your mileage may vary, and I understand that. But if given the option, I like it. And certainly by adding it, it doesn't detract from a, a pistol design. I don't know what we gain by rounding this trigger guard. I guess uh, someone can make the argument it's easier to slide into a holster. I have not found that to be the case. Uh, I've never found that a squared off trigger guard, either a Glock or a SIG or this 92 design, ever impedes uh, putting it into a holster. So not too bad, and I like it for ergonomics. So we talked about the grip, the trigger. Um, the controls are relatively ergonomic. I'm not a big fan of slide-mounted things. I just don't like it. And the reason why is as I'm popping around, it's bam, 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 and I do, let's say in the Beretta design, I want to lower the hammer, I have to change my grip, come up here, actuate the safety like that. It's a high reach, and that is a Beretta, innova Beretta innovation that Taurus copied since Taurus used their machinery to produce a lot of their, uh, I think they call them PT-92s. Uh, I don't like slide-mounted safeties, never will. Now, that being said, can I work with them? Sure I can. I mean, I can work with a car that drives 40 miles an hour too, but I just prefer not to. Um, how about the slide release? Nice. I like the position of the slide release. I have no uh, issues with it at all. It works nicely. And again, I cr I'm criticizing the placement of these of this control here. It's an it's just inherent in the design of the M9/92. But I can get used to it. I can get used to anything through training, and so can you, pretty much. As long as we train with it, we'll get used to it. Um, but I will say, and I was saying that that. Uh, sweeping that safety maybe off or using it to lower the handle is a long reach. Well, guess what? If your hands are even smaller, it's a longer reach. So it's a valid criticism, I would say. So ergonomically, I would probably give uh, the nod to Glock uh, and also definitely SIG over the Model 92. Thickness of the grip, the control placement, not the slide lever notwithstanding, 
Uh, ergonomics are good. They are definitely not excellent to outstanding on the Model 92. That's part two. Tune in for part three. Nothing fancy on the M9 slash 92.